I am Megan Wellborn with BioRex News and I've conducted a fascinating experiment along with my fantastic team. We have dissected several animals to show the evolution of vertebrates. We started with the simplest of animals and progressed towards the more complex ones, discovering the differences and similarities between these animals. This was a very visual way in learning how animals came to be. The first two most basic animals were the lamprey and the shark. I dissected a lamprey and a shark. These two animals are two of the most simple animals in the entire world. Lamprey have been on the planet Earth for a very long time, for 500 million years. Sharks are not quite as old as lamprey, but scientists estimate that sharks have been on Earth for 200 million years. While dissecting the lamprey, I discovered that it is a jawless organism. Being jawless is a sign of the lamprey being primitive and simple. While a jaw would allow the lamprey to consume a wider variety of organisms, the jaw would use more energy than it could make up for even with the diversity of nutrients the lamprey could intake with the jaw. This species is the simplest animal because it has a very basic brain and lacks a stomach. The shark, being 300 million years younger, is more advanced than the lamprey. The digestive system in the dogfish shark is far more advanced than that of the lamprey. The dogfish shark has an esophagus and a stomach. The dogfish also has many internal organs that are not shared with the lamprey, such as a duodenum, a pancreas, a spleen, a colon, and a rectal gland. These discoveries led me to believe that the dogfish shark was next in the evolutionary line. The fish is known to have first existed on Earth as far back as 500 million years ago. This number was discovered with the formal identification of more than 32,000 different species of fish. As a result, the fish is the most diverse creature in the world. The most significant contribution the fish made to evolution was that it possessed bones instead of cartilage, making fish the first known vertebrate with a spinal cord that runs through a backbone. It was also the first creature to possess a swim bladder, making swimmer faster and more efficient for creatures without appendages. The salamander is first known to have existed on Earth as far back as 161 million years ago. The salamander possessed many of the same characteristics of the fish, such as bones, gills, and fins, but did not possess a swim bladder. The salamander's major contribution to evolution was its development of small arms and legs, which would replace the swim bladder. The salamander also had a slightly more complex digestive system than the fish. The next animal we dissected was a frog. Frogs have been on this earth for over 180 million years. Before we began the dissection of the frog, we examined the exterior. The frog had very muscular legs due to its form of travel being to hop from place to place. The frog's fingers and toes were very long and thin to better enable the frog to grasp onto things. The frog's skin had a leathery texture to it, and when we cut into the frog's belly, we discovered that it had several layers of skin that were quite thin. There was nothing very shocking about the frog. Everything was clear, and the dissection went smoothly. As we dissected the frog, we observed that its internal structure was quite organized. There was clearly a place for everything, and while the organs did take up the entirety of the frog, the organs were all easily identifiable. The frog's heart was nestled between its lungs, which were fairly small. The smaller the animal, the smaller the lungs. As tadpoles, however, frogs do have gills. As they grow into adult frogs, they lose those gills and develop lungs instead. The frog had a smaller stomach, but quite a long intestine that wrapped all the way around the frog. It even went behind some of the organs. This frog was also a female, as we determined when we discovered two large pouches of eggs. All in all, this dissection went very well, and we were able to see the evidence of the continued movement from water to land, with the absence of gills for the first time in our list of dissected organisms. We placed the frog immediately after the salamander in the order of least complex to most complex organism, because salamanders have gills for their entire lives. Frogs only have gills when they are tadpoles, and when they are adult frogs, they have lungs. We placed the frog immediately after the salamander in the order of least complex to most complex organisms because salamanders have gills for their entire lives. Frogs only have gills when they are tadpoles. When they become adult frogs, they no longer have gills, they have lungs. Both frogs and salamanders are still closely tied to water, but salamanders more so than frogs. The next animal we dissected was a turtle. Turtles have been on this earth for around 230 million years. Before cutting into the turtle, we examined the exterior. The turtle had a large shell that covered all of its body except its four legs, which had claws that appeared to be for digging. The head was also protruding from the shell. For a mouth, the turtle had a sharp tip that looked like it could be used for biting into harder foods as well as fending off predators. We began the dissection of the turtle by placing it on its anterior side so that it was lying on its back. 
We then remove the bottom of the shell, which protects the turtle as it crawls across the ground. As we remove the shell, we discover that turtles have no skin underneath. They just have a very thin layer of tissue that separates the internal organs from rubbing against the rough shell. The turtle's organs at a glance were a mess. It was very difficult to determine where or really what everything was, since they were all sort of massed together inside the turtle. We began by attempting to identify the major organs the intestines, the stomach, the liver, the heart, and the lungs. The intestines were quite easy to find as they were coiled in the very center of the turtle. The heart, lungs, liver, and stomach posed more of a challenge. The turtle had tiny balls of fat that it had stored before it died. The clumps of fat were all over the place and they were not attached to any muscular wall. So when the turtle was alive, those clumps must have just been floating around. Those clumps of fat confused us at first. We didn't realize what they were and thought perhaps the turtle had been sick or that those balls of fat were in fact some type of organ. However, we soon figured out that they were nothing more than stored fats. As we moved forward with the dissection, we realized that in order to see the lungs, the heart, the stomach, and the liver, we would have to essentially gut the turtle. The process proved difficult as many things were quite attached where they were. As we progressed by removing more and more tissue, we discovered most of the turtle's organs were stuffed up in the shell. Without its shell, the turtle's organs would fall out. A turtle's shell is like a human skin, only tougher and made to make it harder for animals to bite into. Whereas other animals that inhabit shells, like hermit crabs, are not born with a shell, and therefore must switch from a smaller shell to a larger shell as they grow, turtles are born with their shells. Turtles clearly adapted this as a form of protection as they evolved. The dissection of the turtle allowed us to see even more changes in organisms as they evolved in the move from, from water to land. I placed the turtle immediately after the frog in the order of least complex to most complex organisms because turtles are so closely tied to water but they have no gills. Frogs have a form of gills when they are tadpoles that allow them to breathe under water until they become adults. If a turtle goes under water, it must leave its nose above the water or hold its breath. The next creature we dissected was a rat. It is believed to have been around on Earth for 55 million years. The outside of the rat was covered in hair to keep in warmth and regulate body temperature. It had four legs for walking and a tail for stabilization. When we cut open the rat, we found the internal structure to be very similar to that of a human. It contained a full digestive tract with an esophagus, stomach, and intestines. It also had a heart towards the head of the animal between two lungs. There's nothing particularly interesting about the rat other than its complex internal structure. We believe that the rat was next in the evolutionary chain because it's completely tied to land. And while some may possess the ability to float, their bodies are not meant for swimming or acquiring nutrients underwater. The lack of a water-based respiratory system, such as gills, and the usage of a tail for stabilization on land is further testament to the land-based nature of the rat. Because life originated in water, it only makes sense that land-dependent creatures came later on the evolutionary chain. The last animal dissected was a pigeon. It has been around for 25 million years. The outside of the pigeon was covered in feathers and spread out along the wings. This is to increase surface area on the wings for flight. The pigeon also had a hard beak for breaking apart shelled foods and digging into hard to reach places. When we opened up the pigeon, the first thing we noted was a large amount of breast meat covering the organs, which is most likely necessitated by the use of wings. Once we got past all of the muscle, we found that the internal structure was very similar to that of a rat. It had a full organ system and a heart between two lungs. We believe that the pigeon is last in the evolutionary chain because, while being like the rat, it is completely tied to land, and the specialized wings and beak must have taken quite some time to develop. Vertebrates evolved over time through natural selection, therefore becoming more complex in the process in order to be able to survive in their environment. Internal organs, the replacement of gills by lungs, and even adapting to have wings in order to fly were just some of these advancements these animals made. This experience of dissections was helpful to understand the, evolu the evolution of vertebrates over time and the progressions these animals made from water to land.